The following program and the funding of the 2018 Hiri Laga Toys construction was proudly sponsored by Steamships. For generations, the Hiri trade was a Motuan tradition born from an ancient legend describing the shipbuilding and seafaring skills required to undertake annual voyages to the west in search of food during the dry season. As legend goes, Edai Siabo, who was a master dogon catcher from Boira village, sailed with other men to a small coral island to catch dugongs. And that night, while the other men slept on the island, Edai and his son slept on the canoe. During the night, a spirit appeared from the sea, seized Edai, and dragged him under the water head first into a small cave among the rocks. The spirit told Edai, I have brought you here to tell you how to build a large sailing ship, which will be called a Lugatoy. Early in the morning, the other men found that Edai was missing. They searched and called out his name, but there was no sign of Edai. When Edai's son awoke, he too wondered what had become of his father. As he leaned across the edge of the canoe to scoop a handful of seawater to wash his face, he spotted his father in the clear water below. Edai's son calls out to the other men on the beach that he has found his father. They help pull up Edai onto the canoe. And while the men were weeping over their drowned friend, he suddenly opened his eyes. His relieved friends asked him what had happened, and he told them that a spirit had taken him into his rock cave and instructed him how to make a lagatoy and about the hairy trading voyage on which the lagatoy must sail. So had I promised that he would explain all when they returned to Boira village. And I carefully built a model of a lagatoy. He tells his clan men, recalling the designs of what the spirit had told him and how they should follow and obey the customs. The next morning, as Edai took the model lagatoy to the beach to try it out, the people of the village followed him with amazement. He placed the lagatoy on the sea and it sailed along quickly. He then followed the little lagatoy while beating the bamboo and sang the songs the spirit had taught him. As the weeks passed, Edai and his clan men started to build a lugatoy. They collected bush materials, big logs, bamboo and cane. They loaded clay pots to trade for sago. The villagers sang the songs Edai taught them and only with the bamboo instrument to farewell the Lagatoy. Nowadays, the great Hiri trading voyages of yesteryear are celebrated in the Hiri Moale Festival, which requires selected Motuan villagers to build Lagatoys and sail them to Ella Beach in Port Moresby. The basis of any canoe is a large, solid log, which is hard to find these days, especially close to the shore. In 2018, the build teams from Pari and Lea Lea villages were provided by festival organisers with suitable logs from forests bordering the grasslands of Central Province. Large logs were so scarce previously in villages in Central that apart from the Sago, Canoe logs were also exchanged for pottery and arm shells during the Hiri trading voyages. This year, however, the trucks of East-West Transport make it all a lot easier. At Lea Lea Village, the first job is to hollow out the logs with axes. Although steel axes are used today, in the past, stone axes would have been used. This would have made it a much longer, harder task than we see today. Traditionally, a village man wishing to build a lagatoy would seek supporters to help build and sail it with him. Such a team leader was known as Badi Tauna, and his first assistant was called Dori Tauna. 
once shaped and more or less hollowed out, the canoe hulls are dragged closer to the water, ready to be joined together. At Pari village, the build teams have gathered nipper and pandanus palm leaves from the nearby grasslands and brought them to the village to carefully weave into sheets. Firstly, bush vines and tree bark are soaked in salt water and then cut to length. This, a communal activity involving many of the Baritauna's family members. Preparations for a Hiri voyage and construction of a lagatoy have to be started many months before the planned departure to ensure that everything is ready by the time the trade winds change. Once completely hollowed out, the exterior surfaces of the canoe hulls are charred inside and out using fast-burning dried coconut fronds. This procedure helps the hulls to be more waterproof, an important factor during the long hairy trading voyages to the Gulf through sometimes rough seas. With the canoe hulls complete, it is time to lash them together with cross struts of bush timber. For this canoe, three hulls are being used, but traditionally it was often more in order to provide a more stable sailing platform and to enable the lagatoy to carry more pots to trade. Today, following traditional practice, nails or bolts are not used. All joints in the lagatoy are lashed tight with split bamboo, rattan cane and bush vines, all sourced from nearby bush areas. The lagatoy is now pulled into the water for the next stage of their construction. Poles wrapped in dry banana leaves are used to waterproof any spaces between the lagatoy hulls and superstructure that is going to be built on top. They are tied very tightly to the top edge of the hulls. Work continues on constructing a base frame for the superstructure from bush timber, lashed together tightly with bamboo and cane. Once again, it's work for the whole family. As more bamboo is required, the Pari build team travel to nearby bush to collect more lengths of bamboo. The bamboo poles are quickly stripped of any side shoots and leaves. They are also on the lookout for a suitably straight tree to be used as a mast. Once one is found, its roots are carefully exposed and dug out along with the trunk of the tree itself. The natural shape and strength of the roots is an essential factor in ensuring that the mast can be properly and strongly attached to the lagatoy structure. The lightest person is selected to climb up the tree and attach a rope near the top so that the main trunk can be carefully lowered to the ground without breaking. The tree selected as the mast is carefully felled and carried along with the bamboo and other necessary bush timber back to the village to be installed in the lagatoy as it continues to take shape. Traditionally, the larger lagatoys would have more than one mast, but today on this vessel, just one is required. 
Framework for the Lagatoy superstructure is gradually being constructed with rough cut bush timber lashed together with cane and split bamboo. The mast is now carried on board to be strongly lashed into the body of the vessel. The broad spread of the roots assists in attaching the mast to the rest of the lagatoy frame and superstructure. It's now starting to look like a traditional lagatoy. It's time to finish the rest of the Lagatoy superstructure at Lea Lea village. This consists of a flat deck that the crew can walk around on and a small room at either end of the vessel. The room at the front of the Lagatoy will be used by the Badi Taunga. Now sheets of woven pandanus leaves are attached to the Lagatoy superstructure frame. Split bamboo, rattan and bush vines are used to attach this. It serves to protect the Lagatoy crew from wind and rain whilst at sea. Traditional Hiri voyages to the Gulf took several days so such shelter was important. Without any navigational aids, Fleets of Lagatoy canoes always sailed within sight of land, so they would know where they were as they journeyed westward along the coast. Almost complete, all the Lea Lea Lagatoy requires now is a sail. Months of hard work by the extended clan members of the Lagatoy captain, the Badi Tauna, has finally come to fruition. Lagatoy hulls would traditionally be packed with dried banana leaves to form a stable bed for their cargoes of pots. Meanwhile, at Pari village, pandanus and nipper matting has been tightly woven into a sheet to serve as a sail and is attached to a bamboo frame to form the distinctive crab claw shape. The lagatoy is floated around to the house where the woven sail has been made. With great care, the lokoru, or family crest, is brought out and attached to the top of the mast with great pride. This is watched by everyone in the village as it identifies the lagatoy as belonging to their clan. The sail is brought out, carefully carried to the vessel, and once at the base of the mast of the Lagatoy, it is hauled into place. Canoes are named after previous big men from each village, or a big man from the clan of the Badi Tauna, each distinguished by varying lengths or colours of material hung from the mast. However, today in Pari village, the name of the canoe has been proudly stenciled across the sail. The Lagatoy is under sail, travelling before the wind, in the same way as the Hiri fleets of yesteryear travelled westwards with the trade winds starting from August, the southeasterly Laurabada. They would return eastward months later with the January monsoon winds, the northwesterly Lahara. Today, the Lagatoy is heading to Port Moresby to participate in the Hiri Moale Festival. Ella Beach, traditionally called Era Kone, has shallow waters where turtles previously came ashore. Today, this allows the Lagatoy to come very close to the beach, and the Badi Tauna on landing is welcomed by Motuan dancers and dignitaries and officials from the Hiri Moale Festival Organising Committee. Yeah. 
Hiri Moale festivities include speeches expressing their pride that the traditions of the Motuan people are being preserved in the construction and sailing of the Lagatoi to Ella Beach. The canoe-born visitors and other guests are entertained by Motuan dancers. Another Motuan tradition is that of tattooing, mainly arms and legs. Hiri Moale is an opportunity to adorn the arms of the dancing ladies with images of clan totems to complement their full and swinging grass skirts. In the background sits Apec House, constructed to host Apec Nation leaders in 2018. Appropriately, when viewed from the air, the shape of Apec House mirrors that of the crab claw sails of a Hiri Lakatoi, also keeping the Motuan culture and traditions alive.